Hey everybody, this is Rhett. Welcome to Statistics. In this video, we'll learn about Z intervals. The building blocks of every confidence interval are a point estimate and margin of error. The point estimate is a value of a statistic, such as X bar or P hat, a sample mean or sample proportion. The margin of error, E, is the product of a standard error and some multiple of the standard error determined by the confidence level. This multiple of the standard error is called a critical value. The critical value may be a z-score from the standard normal distribution or a t-score from the student's t-distribution or a value from some other distribution such as the f-distribution or chi-squared distribution. If the critical value is a value z from the standard normal distribution, we end up with a z interval. So when is a z interval appropriate? A z interval is used to estimate the population mean mu when the population is normally distributed and the value of sigma is known, or when the sample size is large, greater than or equal to 30, and the value of sigma is known. A z-interval is also used to estimate the population proportion, p, when the following conditions are met. n times p times 1 minus p is at least 10, and the sample size is no more than 5% of the population. So how do we find critical values? One way is by using the empirical rule. Confidence intervals are symmetric about the point estimate. So for 95% confidence, we want the z-score that corresponds to the middle 95% of data. According to the empirical rule, that z-score is 2. How can we find other critical values from the standard normal distribution? First, choose a level of confidence, C. The level of significance, alpha, is the complement of C, so 1 minus C. Divide alpha by 2. Then find the corresponding z-score using an inverse function. Let's look at an example. Let c equal 90%. Then alpha is the complement of c. 1 minus 90% is 10%. When we divide alpha by 2, we get 5%. z of alpha over 2 is the inverse of 5%. In Excel, we'll use the norm.s.inverse function. If you're using a TI-84, you can use the inverse norm function with the parameters 0 0.05, 0, and 1. From the empirical rule, we know that the critical value that corresponds to 95% confidence is 2. Let's find the critical value using the alpha over 2 method. Let C equal 95%. Then alpha is the complement of C, in other words, 5%. Alpha over 2 is 2.5%. We need to find Z of alpha over 2, the inverse of 2.5%. Again, we can use either Excel or TI-84. Either way, Z of alpha over 2 is 1.96. Here's a table with critical values that correspond to the most common confidence levels. Note that based on the empirical rule, the critical value of Z for 95% confidence is 2. In practice, though, we use 1.96, which is more exact. How do we use Z of alpha over 2 to construct Z confidence intervals? Let's look at an example using a formula. Assume that a certain population follows a normal distribution with population standard deviation sigma of 15. Construct a 90% confidence interval for mu based on a point estimate of 75 obtained from a sample of size 20. Since the population is normal, it's appropriate to construct a Z confidence interval. The formula we'll use is X bar plus or minus E where E is equal to Z of alpha over 2 times sigma over the square root of N, 
We can look up z of alpha over 2 from the table on the previous slide. It's 1.645. We'll multiply this by 15 over the square root of 20. The result is approximately 5.5. So the confidence interval is 75 plus or minus 5.5. In other words, 69.5 to 80.5. So we are 90% confident that the population mean is between 69.5 and 80.5. Technology such as Excel or a TI-84 calculator can eliminate some of these steps. Let's see how that works. First, let's look at Excel. To construct a z-interval in Excel, we'll use the confidence.norm function. The arguments are alpha, sigma, and n. Let's construct a 90% confidence interval for mu based on a point estimate of 75 obtained from a sample of size 20. We'll use the Excel function confidence.norm. Alpha is the complement of C, in this case 10%, so 0 0.1. Sigma is 15 and N is 20. The output is the margin of error, 5.517 or approximately 5.5. This is the same margin of error that we find using the formula. Let's construct the z-interval using a TI-84. Again, we'll construct a 90% confidence interval for mu based on a point estimate of 75 obtained from a sample of size 20. The z-interval function is found under the stat menu. Select test. Option 7 is z-interval. You'll select either data or stats. If you have raw data in a list, select data. If you have summary statistics, select stats. We have summary statistics. Sigma is 15. X bar is 75. N is 20. Our confidence level is 0.9. Select calculate. And the output is an interval, 69.483 to 80.517. How do we interpret z-intervals? Here's a template. We are blank percent confident that the population blank is between blank and blank. For example, we are 90 percent confident that the population mean number of jelly beans in a 14 and a half ounce jar is between 319 and 331. So in this video we learned about z-intervals, when to use a z-interval, how to find critical values from the standard normal distribution, z of alpha over 2, constructing z-intervals using technology, specifically Excel and a TI-84, and interpreting z-intervals. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Until next time, stay real and be rational.